Hi everyone, in this video we will begin module 3 reactive chemistry. The focus of the lesson will be on differentiating physical and chemical change. We will begin by looking at what a chemical reaction is, and then look at the differences between what a chemical and a physical change have. Here are our syllabus stop points. We should already be familiar with what a physical change is. We can think of physical change in terms of the particle model, where substances are made of an arrangement of particles which either have a definite shape and are close together when they are in the solid state, are able to be manipulated and roll over one another in the liquid state, or are energetic and separated in the gaseous state. Some physical characteristics include volume, colour, and texture. Something which is also important to know about physical change is that they are usually reversible reactions, but they do not involve any change in chemical composition. They also have a relatively small amount of energy change involved, if there is energy change involved, and that is why they are usually reversible. An example of a physical change is the melting and freezing of ice. When ice melts or freezes, the intermolecular forces which are between the water molecules are broken and formed. We can see on the right hand side an image of the structure of water, where hydrogen bonds are holding together the various water molecules. With physical change, the chemical bonds are unchanged. And while these hydrogen bonds may be broken, the covalent bonds between the hydrogen and the oxygen within the compound itself remain untouched. Therefore, the chemical composition is going to remain unchanged, meaning that this will remain as H2O when it either freezes or melts. And so commonly, changes in state of matter are going to be examples of physical change. Chemical change is different to physical change because it's actually the production of a new substance altogether. This is often what we mean when we say that the chemical properties of a substance have changed. There occurs to be the breaking of existing bonds and or the formation of new bonds. And these bonds we commonly know as the intramolecular bonds. They can either be covalent or ionic. The chemical composition overall of the reactant is going to be rearranged to form a new product. An example of chemical change is the formation of iron rust. This occurs when iron metal becomes exposed to oxygen gas and it forms a layer of iron 3 oxide on the surface, which has the characteristic orange and brown tinge. This is an example of a chemical change, because the metallic bonds which hold the iron together are being broken, and the covalent bonds between the oxygen are being broken, and then ionic bonds are being formed between the iron and the oxygen to form the iron 3 oxide. As a general rule, we are able to quantify what chemical and physical changes are, by understanding the chemical changes that involve the breaking and forming of bonds. In particular, intramolecular bonds for chemical change, which involve the ionic bonds, the covalent bonds, and the metallic bonds. Physical changes, however, involve the breaking and forming of intermolecular forces. These are the dispersion forces, the dipole-dipole interactions, or the hydrogen bonds as we saw in water. It is important to have a solid understanding of intra- and intermolecular forces to better understand the differences between chemical and physical change. Here we have the same example of water which is in both the solid and the liquid state. In either states, it maintains its structure as H2O, where the H's are depicted by these blue dots, and the oxygen is depicted by the red dot. If we see each of these molecules has a composition of two blue dots and one red dot. That is the same in both the solid state and in the liquid state. However, in our electrolysis reaction, what we notice is that the bonds between the oxygen and the hydrogen themselves are being severed to turn into oxygen gas and hydrogen gas. So on the left, this is an example of a physical change, whereas on the right, this is an example of a chemical change. Chemical reactions also have several indicators. Indicators include color change, the production of odor, a change in temperature, meaning that it can either be endo or exothermic, the evolution of a gas, which is often demonstrated in bubbling or effervescence, and precipitation, which is the formation of a solid. Color change is a simple concept, which is as the name suggests. The reason why we observe a color change as a macroscopic change is because the macroscopic change is going to be determined by the extent of the microscopic change. What does this mean? Well, let's have a look at an example here. Copper patina, or rusting, occurs where copper is exposed to oxygen and forms copper oxide. The image is demonstrated on the right hand side where copper has its characteristic brown luster, but in the presence of oxygen, when it forms copper oxide, it turns into this green teal color. The extent of the color change from this brown to green color is going to be dependent on how much of a chemical reaction has occurred, meaning that the macroscopic change, what we see, is determined 
by the microscopic change. The production of an odor is similarly an indicator of chemical change. This is because to sense an odor, there must be a release of molecules into the air. This means that odors which we are able to scent are often the release of a formed gaseous substance. In the case of the rotting egg smell, it is actually the formation of sulfur dioxide gas which is why we are able to smell it. This is where hydrogen sulfide reacts with oxygen to form water and the sulfur dioxide gas. Temperature change is often the result of chemical reaction and be classified by the thermodynamic natures. Either it can be exothermic if energy is released, meaning that the reaction vessel is going to feel hot, or endothermic if energy is absorbed, meaning that the reaction vessel feels cold. We'll go into more detail about exothermic and endothermic reactions in Module 4. The evolution of gas is usually easily observed in the form of effervescence. An example of where we might see effervescence is in the opening of a can of soft drink, because this is going to release carbon dioxide gas. Here we have carbonic acid, which is going to separate into H2O and CO2. It is the released carbon dioxide which is initially dissolved that gives the soft drink its fizziness. Similarly, when acid reacts with metals such as with the reaction between magnesium and hydrochloric acid, hydrogen gas is going to be evolved from that reaction and we will see this in the form of bubbling. A precipitation occurs where there is a formation of a solid. This can be done often by mixing two solutions together. The solution may appear cloudy, although it may also be potentially coloured. In the case on the right hand side we have the formation of lead iodide which produces this cloudy yellow colour. This can be formed when we mix a solution containing lead ions with another solution that contains iodide ions and they will react with one another to form the ionic salt lead iodide. The example reads, a student mixed two colourless solutions together into a beaker and observed that a white substance rapidly formed and settled to the bottom. The student also noticed that the beaker felt warm when they picked it up. Explain whether or not a chemical reaction had likely occurred. In this question, there is a mixture of two colourless solutions to form a new solid substance. This is an indication of a precipitation reaction, meaning that ionic bonds must have been formed between ions in solution. The warm feeling which the student feels is also an indication that the reaction was exothermic, since exothermic reactions are often synonymous with the formation of bonds. As a result, we are able to conclude that an exothermic precipitation reaction had likely occurred.